there are a number of ligaments around the vertebrae that play a part in flexion, extension, and rotation. Some of these ligaments serve to hold the intervertebral discs in place, and all of them play a role in limiting movement such that we do not injure ourselves or our spinal cord. The articulations between each vertebrae are of two types, one called amphiarthrodial joints, where the vertebrae glide on the intervertebral discs. The second is the diathrodial joint, where the joint articulates between the vertebral arches. Each vertebrae is only capable of slight movement. Taken in combination with the spinal column as a whole, the range of motion is considerable. There is more flexion available than extension. Range of motion is limited by the ligaments, the deep back muscles, and the shape and articulations of the vertebral bodies. The spinal column is under relatively more stress during standing backbend. There is more rotation available when the spine is neutral. The anterior longitudinal ligament attaches at the atlas, or the first cervical vertebrae. It is a broad band of fibers extending from C1 all the way to the sacrum. It consists of three layers of dense longitudinal fibers. The most superficial layer extends over four to five vertebrae at a time. The second layer is comprised of fibers extending two to three vertebrae, while the innermost layer is comprised of fibers extending from one vertebrae to the next. The posterior longitudinal ligament is within the vertebral canal. It extends along the posterior surfaces of the vertebrae from the axis to the sacrum. The ligament is intimately adherent near the intervertebral discs, which means it plays a major role in keeping the discs in place, especially during spinal flexion. The fibers of the posterior longitudinal ligament are denser and thicker than the anterior longitudinal ligament. Injury to the posterior longitudinal ligament is common during improper heavy lifting. A weakened or torn ligament will contribute to ruptured or slipped discs. The supraspinal ligament is a strong fibrous cord which connects the spinous processes from C7 all the way to the sacrum. It is thicker and broader in the thoracic and lumbar and is interwoven with the neighboring fascia. The ligamentum nucia is a fibrous membrane in the neck that corresponds to the supraspinal ligaments for the cervical vertebrae. The interspinal ligaments connect adjoining spinous processes and actually extend from the root to the apex of each process. They are narrow in the thoracic region, allowing for more spinal flexion in this part of the spine, while broader and thicker in the lumbar region and hardly developed in the cervical vertebrae. Intertransverse ligaments connect the transverse processes of adjacent vertebrae. A few scattered fibers in the cervical vertebrae, the intertransverse ligaments are intimately woven into the deep back muscles of the thoracic region. The lamina flava connect the lamina of adjacent vertebrae and extends from the axis to the sacrum. Their marked elasticity serves to preserve the upright posture and to assist the vertebral column in resuming it after flexion. The intervertebral fibral cartilages, or spinal discs, lie in between the bodies of the vertebrae and act as a significant attachment for the vertebrae. The discs are important shock absorbers and when possible try to distribute the weight evenly throughout the discs. The discs comprise around one quarter of the overall length of the spine. Spinal rotation has a twisting effect on the discs, causing them to compress slightly.
The lumbar vertebrae are five in number. They are relatively wide and thick, and are the largest of the vertebrae. The shape of the vertebral bodies and the articulations of its processes means the lumbar vertebrae contribute greatly to spinal flexion and lateral movement. Extension is the greatest in the lower part of the lumbar curve. There are twelve thoracic vertebrae. The movements of the thoracic vertebrae are limited to reduce interference with respiration. The shape of the bodies prevents flexion and extension and is limited by the articulation of the spinous processes. The connection between C7 and T1 will limit thoracic flexion while the neck is extended. Rotation is free in the thoracic vertebrae, and each thoracic vertebrae could rotate freely on its horizontal axis if it were not for the articulations with the ribs. The cervical vertebrae are seven in number. The articulations of C1, or the atlas, and C2, or the axis, have a whole other set of ligaments and comprise at least four distinct joints. The cervical vertebrae allow for free flexion, extension, and rotation. The ligaments, the intervertebral discs, and the shapes of the vertebrae themselves all contribute to our range of motion. By reaching our complete range of motion on a daily basis, we ensure these ligaments will remain strong and even in length. We also massage the discs and create space and length in the spine.